Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial for um, procedural dungeon toolkit. Now, this is a clean Unity scene, as you can see. Um, let's make this a 3D scene. Now, to get started, you don't need to do anything but going to pre-made scene and import this package right here. Now this contains everything you need to run this demo scene, basically. Um, everything but um, the standard character package, which we are going to import as well. Now this package right here contains some, um, some textures, you know, stuff to create quick dungeon to help you get started quickly um, now this doesn't come with the um, with the, the main package because uh, it contains some reality free stuff like this key um, I didn't make some materials in there I didn't make either so this isn't part of the package just to help set up the demo scene so when you imported that what you need to do next is import a character package Just note that you don't need to do any of this to be able to generate dungeons with the generator. So now that that's done, we're just going to simply go into the pre-made scene folder again and double click on demo scene. And as you can see, it added a bunch of objects as well as a map settings if you hit play there we go generated dungeon all right so now that we're back in a new scene I'm going to show you how to set up the dungeon generator by yourself um, basically all you need is an empty game object I'm not even going to rename it no, I'm going to rename it to map. And you're going to link from the scripts folder the dungeon generator script. That is the main script to generate dungeons around this central point right here, which we're going to place at the origin and focus on. Next up. As you can see, we got a script. We got all our slots for our game objects. Next thing you need is floor, ceiling, wall, and the player. You need at least these first four slots to be filled. And I'm gonna explain why. Well, you don't exactly need these in the newer versions, but in this version I'm using, which is the first one, you do need them. So I'm gonna add them for the sake of this demo. So we've made a wall, which is going to be 3 by 3 by 3. The only important part is that it's a cube. And why that is, is that the empty areas are the same size cube. So to create our floor, we're simply going to create a slab. And make it just one unit high. So now we got our two components. Let's just move them down so that they don't generate in the same area that the dungeon does, you know, right here. And to that, I'm gonna add um, a new, another object which is gonna act as the player game object. And all you need from that is a position. So 
let's place it at the origin so the player spawns in the middle of your dungeon since the dungeon extends outward in every direction um, so yeah now let's go back into the main the, the, not the main camera but the map object and add our objects so the wall first doesn't really matter but and we're gonna add slab as floor and ceiling because that's just a cap you know the slab is it's gonna be right there if you want over the empty areas and by the way you can move those anywhere you want seriously doesn't matter and now we just need our player game object increase the map size to something like a hundred buffer size is fine and hit play and now as you can see we can see something but it's ugly and you can't really see what's happening so let me just um, cre uh, create a new directional light so you can at least see and as you can see we can navigate this dungeon it's ugly no textures um, there's nothing else but walls and ceilings but this is the base dungeon and the only role this player object does right now is tell the generator which objects around the world should be generated so that removes a lot of load when it comes to rendering <laughs> yep that's basically it um, you can increase the buffer size during gameplay so uh, as you can see we got our whole dungeon generated it's not really big for a hundred unit dungeon but sometimes they they end up more small than others it's still procedural generation you can't you can't force results as much all right so another part of this asset is the ability to generate items on the fly so if you want one of your objects say a wall to be able to generate um, items all you need to do is link or add an empty game object to that object and to be honest you could start with a, a cube to place it around better but you're gonna need to place it manually afterwards anyway and basically I'm gonna place it on top There we go, and that would be your object where your object would spawn on that that object. All you need to do for objects to be able to generate is link this item manager prefab or script to the prefab. Now you can see basically the same layout as the map script with prefabs that you need to generate. Um, Right now, if you want to add more items, you need to add more of these in code, just like with the map. So far, you need to edit code. Um, I'm working on an AI, of course, to remedy that, but for now, you need to do that in code. So back to the topic, items. Um, here we go, we can see them all the possible items that can generate at each spawn um, now this type here is what drives what generates where so say here you want um, tabletop candles to be able to generate you can set it as a table type spawn and tabletop candles are going to be able to generate on that spawn um, and say if you had an item spawn underneath it or 
if an item spawn you're using has something covering the top and you can't spawn certain items because it, would, it wouldn't be realistic or something else, um, you can set this to table, uh, I mean drawer, drawer and the, the, the tabletop torches I'm not going to generate. Basically all this type does is um, restrict the generation process a little and enables you to um, basically uh, make sure only the objects you want generate where you want. That's the, the main purpose of the entire thing. Now all that's, all that's left if you want um, the player to be able to um, pick up this item is to add a box collider you can make it way smaller you can make it just make it as big as you want and there you go so when the player is gonna touch that box collider the, the um, item manager script is gonna make the item get picked up by the player so that's already handled in that script as well all you need is a box collider that's a trigger and that's important has to be a trigger doesn't need to be a physical box collider and yeah that's pretty much it something to consider when making your own um, assets for this generator is that um, the walls are basically solid walls of a fixed cube size so these things in a 3d editor you can um, duplicate those and say you would place another one of these cubes next to this one and uh, i'm gonna demonstrate it like this this and then we're gonna advance those like that so even if it's dark you can see there's the outline but <clears throat> as you can see just by creating three cubes in the generator or in in any 3d editor since all you need is three cubes and then you can even put another cube on top to, to create a scene and like test what your um, what your asset looks like compared to the wall and other assets. Um, this is the method I use to create every asset in this in this package. I just created like a fake a fake corridor using those those cubes as walls, and then you can scale all your other models according to that cube. And then in editor all in Unity Editor, all you need to, let, to do is manual scaling. So, for example, this table right here was yeah, it's it's a little stretched out. So let's scale it down this axis. Yep, looks good. Yep, so that's pretty much it. You know, I've made <clears throat> I've made this um this cell model using this pretty much this exact approach right here, just by modeling in between these walls to make sure when I placed it in the game that they would fit. And something else to consider is that um, when placing, say we're placing an object in between these three, these three cubes, and let's say this cube in the middle wasn't there and it was the empty area, um, where this this marker is located right here, this um, I don't even know how you call that, but when the arrows are in where the arrows are basically at the origin of them the empty areas this is where 
um, the the your asset is going to generate if you don't move it in the generation process. So from there, to place your asset correctly in the dungeon, um, you would need to figure out in which direction you wanted to go, and you can do that by using the um, the neighbors reference that there's in the code you can just simply um, like you, you can just if you never programmed before you can just write top and you're gonna you're gonna have the top neighbor and such but yeah all you need to do is figure out where uh, the neighbors basically where say you want to add a torch um, so and the torch generates in the middle you want to add a torch to this wall but you want to say you add torches to empty areas since torches should only generate in open areas um, and you got to figure out in which direction there's a wall and then you just need to figure out how much you need to translate towards that wall how much you need to translate up to place it where you want and it's always going to generate at the same place relative to the center of the empty area it generated that um, i know it's a little hard to explain um the only way to really understand that is if you go have a look at the code and see how that all acts together because it's the same process for every object all right every object has the same process of generation so yeah that's that's pretty much it if you have any questions you can email me just leave a message on the thread and i should answer as soon as possible Thanks for watching.